once they get a crisis, you know, and people like Adolf Hitler and all the great, the, the dictatorial leaders of the past said, crisis is the way we control people. Fear, fear enslaves people. A sleepwalking people, Hitler said, is the way we can control a nation. And that's exactly what they want, folks. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for September 11th through 18th, 2023, while supplies last. First, when you purchase a bundle of five 10-ounce Nordic Mint bars and five 5 5-ounce bars, all 10 bars are priced at just $1.89 over spot per ounce. Three nines fine silver, these are priced lower than anything else other than full-size Comex bars, but obviously offer far better liquidity. The Gold Eagle was first released in 1986 and has been one of the most popular gold bullion coins in the world, providing incredible recognizability and investor trust. The one-tenth Eagle is additionally sought after for its high degree of flexibility and liquidity. Like the one-ounce Eagle, the one-tenth Eagle is 22 karat gold strengthened with copper. Its one-tenth of a troy ounce of gold comes 50 to a tube, 5,000 to a box, and is available at just $37.50 over melt while supplies last. Finally, the Gold Eagle is IRA eligible. Next, from Valcambi, a Swiss mint known for producing some of the highest quality products in precious metals, we have Kilo Silver Bars, which are 32.15 troy ounces of 3 nines fine silver, cast with individual serial numbers and a beautiful antique-style finish. They are only $1.99 over spot per ounce. They come 15 to a box and are IRA eligible. And for your choice silver rounds, you may choose between the iconic Silver Buffalo Round made by various private mints across the U.S. and the Silver Asahi Round from Japan. Both 3 nines fine, both 20 to a tube. The Asahi Rounds are also IRA eligible. And if you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, call us, and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We are glad to have this returning guest, constitutional attorney John White, who is the founder of the Rutherford Institute at rutherford.org. He joins us this Wednesday, September 13th, 2023. John, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Thanks for having me on, sir. You have visited us several times in the past to talk about government overreach and what people can do about it by educating themselves and preparing to stand up and take action and refuse to comply with things that are clearly out of line and out of uh, out of the calling of the Constitution, etc. We had a rather egregious example rear its ugly head this week. That's why we're interviewing you right now to get this story out while it's still happening in the news. And that is the governor of the state of New Mexico declaring a state of emergency as a public health crisis related to gun violence and saying that the, the Constitution needed to be suspended temporarily, especially the Second Amendment clause allowing people to bear arms in, because of gun violence that has been uh, higher than acceptable in Albuquerque in particular. And we thought immediately of you because you have often stood up and argued cases up through and in, including the U.S. Supreme Court where government has overstepped its bounds. Can you talk to us about this case in particular that's happening right now? And uh, we were, I guess, intrigued to see that it looked like there was pushback both from the local sheriff and the local populace which are both positive signs but could you bring us through kind of the whole story what it means and why it's important well the the governor uh in uh new mexico um governor grisham has come out and said that uh, because of public public health a public health exception they want to suspend the second amendment and uh, because of some shootings that have been occurring here and there and uh as you said uh, local sheriffs, uh, the attorney general there, a number of people now have come out and said they're not going to support any of that. They understand there, that there's not a public health exception to the Second Amendment. And uh, so that's basically what we're seeing. Uh, this country was founded on the idea that we, you could bear arms. And uh, today, the government, as I see it, the way they're moving toward uh, – going toward gun owners and people who are selling guns and stuff like that, either finding them, licensing them, FBI showing up, investigating them, invading them, by the way. And the crazy thing I see about all this, we have the government talking so much about the danger of guns and why guns are so bad, 
And now they've given submachine guns to the Department of Agriculture to enforce milk requirements at farms. And uh, the FBI now ha- and IRS have submachine guns and all kinds of equipment, hollow point bullets, grenade launchers. And so what they're saying is basically the government all the way through in many of the like, the hierarchy is um, we want to have guns, but we don't you to have guns. And the number of things I've said, I've met with some politicians who are so anti-gun, I keep saying, um, these are, and when I was in Washington, D.C. a few times, and I asked, well, what about the Secret Service people who are guarding you? Are they going to be carrying guns? And they go, uh, yes, yes, yes. And I said, well, <laughs> will they shoot somebody if they have to? To defend me? And I'm going, exactly. That's what guns are for. See, they don't want to give up the guns. The police don't want to give up the guns. They want the American people to give up their guns. And that's a movement that's growing as I see it. But as I said, there's not a public health exception to um, the Second Amendment, which is basically one of the key principles of the Constitution. You know, it was uh, Benjamin Franklin, it's a great quote, by the way, where he said, democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for lunch. Freedom is a well-armed lamb challenging the vote. Uh, and that, yeah. that's, I mean, it, it, it's funny, but when you read it, you go, what he's saying is, hey, the only way we're going to have freedom is to be armed. And, you know, you have these all these SWAT team raids are going on lately, and the press is not covering any of that, which blows my mind. I don't know if you saw the Ted Dessler case in Tennessee a couple weeks ago. Incapacitated veteran. The FBI show up outside his home with loudspeakers. Uh, this is there were actually video of some of this. A, a neighbor was do, watching it. The FBI with a loudspeaker is telling, demanding they come out of their home, uh, Ted Dester's home. They threw tear gas, flashbang grenades in the house. This is a guy with many many problems. He didn't have a weapon, and they his mother came out and said, "Why are you here?" And they said, "It's none of your damn business." They put her in the back of the car and lock her up. He comes stumbling through the house, tear gas, by the way. I'm a former veteran. I, w- I was trained in tear gas, how to evade tear gas. And if you've never been tear gas, folks, don't be tear gas because it'll blow your eyes out, your mouth, your lungs. He stumbles out of the house, they shoot him. Uh, that's the, what the government's doing, and they're telling the average American you shouldn't own a gun. And then with red flag laws and all those kind of things where neighbors are reporting people today, uh, they're trying to create a gun phobia in America. I'm not really, to be honest with you, the government likes crisis. Once they get a crisis, you know, and people like Adolf Hitler and all the great, the, the dictatorial leaders of the past said crisis is the way we control people. Fear. Fear enslaves people. A sleepwalking people, Hitler said, is the way uh, we can control a nation. And that's exactly what they want, folks. They don't want people out there who might say, hey, we're tired of this. And the reason we have the Second Amendment, by the way, as the founders gave it to us, and there are a lot of good quotes, by the way, that I have in my books like Battlefield America, etc., where they uh, say that without guns, what do we do? We're an enslaved people. It's a form of enslavement. They know that because – uh, in 1938, when Hitler outlawed guns for the Jewish people, uh, and then later on, all guns, it just starts incrementally and bang, there you go. You don't have a gun, so you're an enslaved folk. They don't want people getting together in groups or militias and saying, we will not put up with this any longer. So that's where it's headed, by the way. It's a, it's a philosophy that's very, very dangerous and you know, and here's another thing that's really interesting. In 2018, the FBI issued a report where they showed in that year more people were killed by clubs, knives, and other cutting instruments than guns. Much more. So we're going to do away. What's next? Knives, clubs, whatever we're going to do away with. See, it doesn't make sense in the long run. But I will say this. Uh, we're on the verge of, you know, 9-11 just happened 22 years ago. A major crisis which completely took our Constitution and threw it out the window, by the way, uh, a major crisis. Be careful, America, and you know, be perceptive. You don't have to be paranoid or be a conspiracy theorist, but be perceptive because you're talking to me. I've flew down out of Washington, D.C. for 40 years, and I'm telling you, that is one of the most corrupt institutions run by the deep state is the FBI memo that was leaked. FBI leaked the memo, or somebody in the FBI. And 
listen, we moved into a total surveillance state where they're watching everything we're doing. The Department of Homeland Security is doing threat assessments on homes across America. If you uh, if you've broken the law, if you own a weapon, you're a red. And we've had cases where the government sh- uh, police have showed up all agitated at the door and banged people around. And they said, why there was he so edu- agitated? We're just normal people. They have all that information on their phones now. The police have a, a, an app called Shadow Dragon where it used to take them 30 some days to collect all the information of you on the Internet. Now it takes 30 minutes. So they can just sit in their office quickly. Oh, oh, this whitehead guy, he, he's a rebel. Whoa, whoa, he's causing problems. Uh, why don't we go visit him and rough him up a little bit? And they can do that, by the way. They get away with it a lot of times if there's not lawyers out there that are willing to go and defend these issues. So that's where I think it is. We just got to be careful. And I don't think guns are evil. I think one thing we need to do, a better edu- form of education on people, training them to make sure they know how to use firearms and stuff like that, especially parents, you know, with your children. And, uh, but... You know, without uh, some kind of defense, if the government has flashbang grenades, they have uh, submachine guns, they have hollow point bullets, which was illegal when I was in the military, uh, tanks, and all these things they have in armored equipment, and they're crashing through doors and destroying our property. They don't have any respect for our Fourth Amendment rights. Listen, we're falling apart, folks. Surveillance has done away with our uh, Fourth Amendment, basically. They're watching everything we're doing. And with the emergence now of artificial intelligence, and we have people like Elon Musk that are warning against it, saying, whoa, whoa, watch out for AI. If it takes control, you're going to have an evil dictator. Uh, and they're having these robots now going to sporting events. I don't know if you saw that. And doing facial recognition scans on people at sporting events. Where are we headed, America? And what are we going to do to stop it? Another phenomenon that uh, is especially hypocritical in all of this, it, are, as you pointed out when you questioned people in uh, Washington who have security details, armed security details, ready to use uh, lethal force and guns to protect them, and yet denying, uh, assuming that that's not uh, something that all people should have the same benefit of. But again, as you point out also, the Second Amendment was not specifically for hunting or for self-defense. It was to repel all threats, foreign and domestic, <laughs> as the, the job of the, uh, the various militia of the several states that were joined together to be the United States of America. But in the face of that, you have this, this uh, hypocrisy on the part of those in power saying that we should uh, dismantle uh, these structures that, that provide the uh, authority, security, that sort of thing, except when it serves their immediate needs. We had just uh, in the last week here, uh, we had the DFL second vice chairwoman injured after a uh, carjacking in Minneapolis. So as much as we deplore uh, any act of, of uh, criminal violence, such as carjacking, uh, she had a history of being a vocal, one of the, one of the premier uh, vocal proponents of defunding the police just a few years ago. And now, uh, you know, we're saying where were the police and why aren't they investigating uh, who did this and that sort of thing. So at the same time that the ordinary people are wanting to have legitimate law and order in our country, uh, we're being told that it only only should apply to the elite. Any uh, thoughts from you on that dichotomy, that 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 unequal playing field of justice in our country? Yeah, the elite. The elite want control. They always have. And uh, Edward Snowden, you know, he's been kind of shut up here recently, but the last couple of months he's mentioned the fact that China has basically invaded America. They have their own police station now in New York City and maybe other cities we don't know about, 47 across the globe. And uh, our government is moving toward a total control society, uh, much like you see in China. And uh, if we don't get strong at the local level, and I keep telling people the 10th Amendment says that local governments can nullify acts of the federal government. Uh, when you have the FBI, by the way, which is a very corrupt institution, it was the FBI that went after Ted Deschler in Tennessee. Um, going around the country with submachine guns, they're now doing SWAT team raids and stuff like that, but they're also training police chiefs uh, at the Marine base in Quantico. Uh, what are we doing? What are we allowing that? And I would say we uh, city councils should take over and say, let's have local police 
not nationalize police. That's how police who live in our communities. And that's another thing that's really dangerous here with the weapons and all that stuff is in some of your big cities, you know, 70 percent of the police officers live in another state. They're not local. You need your police officers to be local in the community, living down the block so that they know their neighbors. Otherwise, they're like the military. And that's what we have. And I'll say this, too. I believe it. We've moved into a martial law state. There's no doubt about that. With all the guns and stuff and ammo and stuff that the, the federal government has, uh, with a, several 200 federal agents now armed to the hilt with all this equipment, the IRS now with some submachine guns, and they're getting prepared for something. And we've talked about it, I think, on the show before. There was that training video that was produced several years ago by the Pentagon, the 2030 video, which basically says by 2030, this country could break down and other countries, they're going to have to establish martial law. I think that's one thing they're getting ready for, the possibility of that. Economically, we do not look good in this country. Um, and the workforce issues are big now. And homelessness, migrants now in some cities, basically, are laying on the streets. It's become uh, a society that they, th they, they can easily say, we've got to take control now. We've got to crack down. And here's the other thing. The news media will be saying basically the same thing. And they'll indoctrinate the American people. And as I tell people, entertainment is slavery. Don't let the news media dictate to you, folks. Do your own research. Education precedes action. Or, as I say before it, uh, your eyes are useless if your mind is blind. And most people's minds are blind. They're sitting there listening to some babbling person on television who gets everything off a teleprompter. Those are not the most intelligent people giving you the news, folks. And then when I see on the news, former CIA you know, assistant director is now part of the team. I'm going, wait a minute. <laughs> the CIA is giving me the news? This is the same group that's been so crooked and doing so many things, violating the Fourth Amendment, and all kinds of charges that were made against them during certain wars where they were bringing in drugs and stuff and body bags. This is not the people you want directing things, folks. We need to direct at the local level, especially. And you can make up impact at the local level. Washington, D.C. is very corrupt, very difficult. But they would get freaked out if, if cities across the country and local sheriffs, and I like some of these local sheriffs, what they're doing. They're saying, we're going to enforce the Constitution. And that's what we should be saying in our local city councils. That's exactly where I was going to, as soon as you brought up local, uh, your local sheriff is one of the best ways to keep things local. If I'm not mistaken, the sheriff is the only law enforcement officer listed in the U.S. Constitution. And when we interviewed uh, Sheriff, sheriff Mark Vasilishin uh, from Wood County, Ohio, who is a in a leadership position on the National Council of Sheriffs, he talked about that he doesn't work for the governor, he doesn't work for the mayor, he doesn't work for the city council, he works directly for the people of his county. And his mission is not to uphold whatever the local, what the, whatever the current uh, uh, spirit of the times, the winds of uh, the narrative is at the time, that his mission is to uphold the Constitution and to keep the peace. So uh, can you talk to us about what people can do to ally with their local sheriff's office? Well, I get active in your local city councils for one thing. Start what I call uh, liberal, civil liberties organizations. Get your people together of a like mind. Um, you're going to, have to well, the average American watches about 150 hours of screen time a month. You're going to cut down your screen time, and I'd say I tell people get that 150 hours you spend watching TV. Take 30 hours a month and get together and start a civil liberties oversight committee with your friends in the neighborhood. Work with your local sheriff, support them, and, and make the key argument that it's the Constitution that rules, not some bureaucracy from Washington, D.C. that's basically there to make money. Like I said, out of D.C., it's run by these 385 billionaires in the deep state. You don't want to let them run your life because all they care about now is your money. They see us as data bits. But we can make a difference, and I keep telling people that. And that's how the, the revolution started in this country. It started at the local level with local groups. When the British were coming in, 
in 1776 in those uh, era and burning the churches because that's where the patriots met. They caused the local people to get so upset. They joined together. We got a Declaration of Independence. We got a Constitution. And then we got a Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights is very, very solid giving us the right to freedom of speech, the right to protest in the First Amendment, the right to own arms, then the Fourth Amendment, I mean the Third Amendment, keeping the military out of our homes, which today the military is many times the local SWAT team raids working with the FBI and on up the list here. And other, and also teaching the, the Bill of Rights. Most people have no clue. The average American, by the way, when you ask them what's in the First Amendment, they look at you like, what's that? Uh, they don't even know what's in the Fourth Amendment, and they don't know what's in the Tenth Amendment, down the list. So <clears throat> the key is get in your public schools, too, by the way. The schools are not teaching that anymore. They're not teaching the Declaration of Independence. And why the Declaration of Independence is not, not taught is because Jefferson said in the Declaration of Independence, if the government stinks, you can throw it out, and that we have inalienable rights. What does the word inalienable mean? It means non-transferable. In other words, you have those rights forever. They can't take them away. You can be stupid and give them away, but you can also reinforce them. And so that's what we need. We need to teach our kids, I, I think, to be people who look at it and say, we're going to, we're not putting up with this. We see something wrong. We're going to fight back. Teach your kids to be rebels. We have a Bill of Rights pamphlet we give away at the Rutherford Institute for any kind of type of donation. And the point is, I had one guy call in when I was on a radio interview, and he said, John, it works. I read the Bill of Rights to my kid. We've been studying it, and he's getting the idea that, whoa, I can do this, I can do that. And he may start protesting at school. And I went, way to go. And so that that's, there, there are things you can we can do, but you're going to have to get up off our butts. We become a, an enslaved population. Like I said, entertainment is slavery. Watching a screen device. When I go out to restaurants and I see three kids and two parents, they're all, all reading their phone, I'm going, What? The, listen, Amazon, all that stuff, It's they work with the government, okay? They're feeding you stuff so that you won't do anything but buy a product, folks. And then, listen, as things break down, they're going to send the IRS and groups like in, but they're going to have the guns, but they don't want you to have them. Right. And uh, another thing that you talk about, the government having a corruptive role in all of this imbalance of power. Uh, we went to the Ron Paul Institute's Peace and Prosperity Conference in Washington, D.C., and had uh, U.S. representatives and congressmen talking about the existence of the deep state, which you've also mentioned in Washington, being entrenched for decades and decades and decades, as though it has a life of its own. Many parasites act this way. They think they can kill the host and go on living on their own. And that starts to seem like what the government things through through economically through taxation or through oppression uh, invasion of privacy you know abrogation of constitutional rights etc that they can go ahead and just basically um, prey upon the American people at at our at our expense and we pay for it by the way and then uh, go on living on their own as though as though the deep state is a more important organism than the, the country itself or its people, number one. Number two, uh, taking actions that are directly against the good and the welfare of the people, such as, you mentioned homelessness and vagrancy and, and migrants and that sort of thing, uh, leaving the southern border open where we have, whether it's arguably between 75 different countries or more coming across the border, absolutely no idea who it is that's coming across all kinds of criminal activity, whether it's drugs or human trafficking, et cetera, uh, that's present there. And that's just one of many things. And that gets then diffused and dispersed across the entire country. And you have these centers of um, basically squalid camps and, and diseases that haven't been seen since the, since the Dark Ages showing up in uh, country, uh, cities all around our country. And, and so this fostering and fomenting of the kinds of conditions that would make for the breakdown of society that leads to the training video 2030 need to crack down then from above uh, seems to be happening with full support and sanctioning and direct action of the government. Can you address that? Because it's something I know you've talked about before. Well, they're training, oh, by the way. They're ready for uh, the breakdown when and if it comes. And it could come. Uh, as this country, this country is in the worst shape I've ever seen it. Economically, I mean, well, $30 trillion in debt and money's just flying out into different countries from the Biden administration. Um, it's ridiculous. And there's no control anymore. Uh, we, we, the people, do not. And again, 
we the people, I always say this, the Constitution starts out, we the people do ordain. We are the government. We are the masters, I keep telling people. They're our servants. But now they've become the masters because we've allowed it, because we've gone to sleep. And uh, we're a sleepwalking people. Many of us are out there today. And that's one reason I've been doing what I've been doing all my life. I'm trying to wake people up, even if I have to slap them upside the head, to get them to wake up and say, what? Let's do something about this, okay? If you have children and whatever. But here's the view, and I, I see this a lot. When I, I had a good friend of mine who worked for a major publication, and like I said, he called me. I've told this story before. He had worked for a, 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 a representative in Congress, a, a senator, and he called me about a month after his journey there, and he said, John, it's worse than you've ever said. He said, the money controls everything in Washington, D.C. The corporations are in total control. He says it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And uh, that is true. I mean, that's that's basically, they, they view us basically as animals, something to be controlled, to be herded, and stuff like that. They just do that. It's been been going on quite a while. Franklin Delano Roosevelt and a few people had, had talked about that earlier on in notes and letters and said, uh, you know, again, this country's been under control of money for many, many years. And we've got to break loose of that. We don't want Washington, D.C. running our state governments, running our city councils. And that's why local government governs best. And that's why I'm arguing that that's the way to do it. And the obligations on you, America, to do it, to get up off your butts, get in your local governments and your schools and make them be seeds of freedom. And that's the key. And also I'll do this. One thing that we really miss in America, that we've, since AI and all that stuff we're seeing coming, we've lost empathy for others, caring for other people. We need to have empathy. We need to care for each other. That's what rebels do. Rebels don't cause violence. I mean, you look at uh, some of the great rebels of the history from Jesus Christ on, uh, Martin Luther King or whatever, they they get their heads banged, you know, put on crosses, shot in the head or whatever. But at least they stood for something. They didn't sit on their butts and let, let the country go to hell. And there's also the principle that I you've you've touched on just briefly today, but maybe you can hit on it one more time, uh, and that is that one of the repeated tools of oppressors is to divide and conquer, to fracture and fra and fragment the society or the people into into sections and segments that are then uh, despising each other and quarreling amongst each other and blaming each other, and they forget who the real enemy is, the enemy of all of them. So you've talked to us uh, together about education precedes action. Part of that education is in realizing that we're all, we together, one, are the American people. That's it. And that's what their politics today. They want to divide us. Divide and conquer. That's the key, the people. Uh, don't fall for the political stuff or any of that. I mean, it's, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Because whoever's running the country, listen, the president of the United States is just a puppet, okay? When you have a president like Joe Biden who has trouble talking, do you think he's really running all the federal agencies? Come on, folks, think about it. The emperor has no clothes anymore. So the point is, don't let them divide you. Let's work together. And let's. Uh, we can, I, I think there's hope. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. And I believe there's hope because I've, when you look at the founding fathers of the past, they said, we've had enough of this. We're fighting back. It's time to do that. John, if people want to follow your writings, your work, and the resources that you have assembled to make it easy for people to learn what's in the first, the second, the fourth, and the tenth amendments, where should they go? Go to rutherford.org, rutherford.org. We uh, do weekly commentary, free dose. They'll help educate you. And folks, education precedes action. Get out here and take some action. And folks, if you don't want to miss a single interview with John Whitehead, other constitutional attorneys and experts on finance that we have on here on Finance and Liberty, make sure you go to our website, libertyandfinance.com. Put in your name, your email address, click submit. You'll get one confirming email. When you respond to that, then you'll get one email per day in your inbox with our latest interviews, weekly specials, and any of our other news items that we include in our mailing list. John Whitehead, founder of Rutherford.org. Thank you for joining us again on Liberty and Finance. Thank you, sir. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. 
Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.